Welcome to the Dirt, Sweat & Gears Used Appliance Emporium. We're here in my garage with all of these appliances because uh, we had just moved some stuff out of my garage into the house. In fact, this is the final batch of stuff that I was waiting on to move from the garage to the house, which means I can fit my car again. You're probably asking, what are all these appliances doing in the garage and not in the house? Well, uh, as you can see behind me, they're all quite, um, well, let's just say they're a different style. First of all, I was not expecting my tenant to leave appliances behind. That was a surprise to me. Uh, a pleasant surprise, but still a surprise. However, the style of appliances that she left behind just wasn't going to cut it for the kind of house that I found myself building once I got started. Uh, I was planning on just using a side-by-side -side washer and dryer, uh, but when I got into the space and started really working with it, I discovered that uh, a stacking unit is going to be the best way to go because it allows for a much more efficient use of the space in there. And also the same thing with the refrigerators. These refrigerators were 32 inches wide. I needed something that was just a hair under 30 and taller to make better use of the kitchen space so that I could build that really cool uh, arrangement around the stove. So let's take a quick look at these appliances and then we're gonna go back into the house and uh, take a look at what I moved in there and then we're gonna get to work. So first up is the refrigerator that my tenant left behind. This is a no-name brand. It's pretty gross inside. Uh, I have the doors propped open because uh, it smells really bad when the doors are kept closed. Next up here is a Frigidaire dryer. This is an electric dryer. It's a 220, uh, which I wanted to go with a gas dryer. So um, I elected to just remove that. Next up is a Kenmore washer, which actually is in decent shape. There's no complaints about it. I just wasn't expecting to have it, which is why I have a Maytag washer that I got for free from uh, my wife's amazing family. Um, or I guess it's my family, my extended family. Uh, thank you to them. Uh, unfortunately, I ended up not needing it, so I'm going to sell it. Uh, we have here a Kenmore refrigerator. This I bought from my contractor for a hundred bucks. Uh, the intention was to have a garage fridge, but uh, I really don't need a full size fridge in this garage. I can I can be just fine with the little mini fridge that I currently have in the house right now. Uh, I have a Shark Carousel microwave. Uh, not not really anything special, but uh, it can go to a good home and get some use. And over here we have a pretty gross Magic Chef stove uh, i have the uh the uh, burner grills for it so um that can clean up and i can sell that for a few bucks i'm probably going to put this all up on craigslist and just uh, get rid of it for uh as uh, you know a a as much money as i can get for it and then down here we have some more furniture we have a cedar chest for my dad's house i'm going to do a video on that later on about um I think I want to do a video dedicated to uh, why free stuff isn't just free stuff for me. Because that, it looks really rough right now, but that can be made into a really beautiful cedar chest. And same thing with these guitars. That's my guitar there and my dad's guitar uh, right next to it. We're, we're going to do a deeper dive into that later on. Let's go into the house. In here, uh, we have the sink right there. I kept it in the box because it weighs about a thousand pounds uh, and it's just really unwieldy and porcelain. So if I drop it, uh, it'll shatter. Uh, so um, you can see here it is a nice big tub and I hope I can fit it. Uh, over here is the toilet. It also weighs about a thousand pounds. Same with the vanity, also weighs a thousand pounds. And this is, both are still in the box. Uh, I have no interest in even opening them until uh, the bathroom is ready for them. On the inside of the house, uh, my electrician is finishing up. You see there's some outlets, there's a switch. Uh, we ended up not doing a switch for the fan. 
This fan is hot wired. I bought a, a remote unit, a uh, universal uh, ceiling fan remote that I'll be able to uh, wire in there. And I'll just get some sticky backer and stick it to the wall or something uh, so that you can control the fan uh, remotely um, without having to pull the chain. In the kitchen, uh, I've been busy. You, you, may, you may notice some changes. Uh, we've got the light fixtures in and they look amazing. By the way, they look amazing. Uh, these two schoolhouse lights were just absolutely the perfect matchup uh, with the oil rub bronze along with this uh, hanging uh, light fixture here, this industrial look and it works. They all work. Well, that one doesn't have a bulb yet and this one has a 60 watt. I've got 100 watt bulbs that are going to go into uh, the uh, schoolhouse lights. But this Edison style bulb is just really cool, especially with the mirror underneath. Uh, and uh, I got the cabinet secured to the wall. This piece right here is just kind of holding them from wobbling back and forth uh, until I can get a countertop. I may also, just, just for good measure, drive some long screws in through the bottom uh, to help keep them secure. Uh, I had to buy a $75 level uh, to line up across all these cabinets, but uh, that's 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 the nature of the beast, you know? Just a crap ton of shims. I used up all my shims, I have to get more. And uh, also, this was a fun little exercise because I got the holes drilled, and then I know, uh, realized after I drilled the holes and started pushing the cabinets in that the pipe comes out at a bit of an angle. They're They're all kind of, you know, slightly different from each other, and so I had to, um, yeah, I'm, I made bigger holes. Uh, so I am actually going to uh, just cut some covers, uh, uh, one cover for each individual, so, uh, and drill out exactly the hole that this needs. You just slip, slip that cover on and glue it to the back so you don't see the big ugly holes. Uh, the uh, wire conduit is actually going to be blocked off by the plate itself, so... Uh, you won't see that hole. I don't have to bother with that. And over here, once we get the stove in, I'm going to start securing these cabinets to the wall. Uh, there is a technique to hanging upper cabinets, and, and I'm going to show you this technique. It's something that I learned when I was doing my house. So uh, it, it's, it's really cool, really easy way to get upper cabinets mounted to the wall securely. This is the beginning of upper cabinets. You can see on this side I've got particle board. Uh, I am going to cut a sheet of eighth inch ply uh, to lay it over the top of this uh, and then I'll be able to finish it all nice and neat and make it look good. Um, I got a couple of drips from the varnish but that can be sanded down. Uh, not a big deal. Um, you see this uh, piece of two by four. Uh, so this is how I get cabinets on the wall myself. Uh, it, because, so here's my thinking. Uh, first you level the two by four. Uh, you, put, you put marks in the wall, level it out, and then you put the two by four against the wall with only the middle screw in. That way you can turn it uh, to make sure it's level. It's much easier to level a two by four than it is to level an entire cabinet. So I got the two by four in the wall just below where I want the cabinet to sit. I measured the cabinet in my other house and um, matched that measurement from the floor, uh, which I believe is something like 56. Let's get the tape measure out and see if, see if I was anywhere near that. As uh, I'm at 55 right now. Yeah, yeah, 55. Uh, so I measured from the, from the floor. I also measured from the countertop. Uh, so this means if I have a two inch countertop, I am still 19 inches from the top of the counter. That is plenty of space. That's probably a little more than you need. Uh, but I think being a little bit more generous with that space is fine considering that this is a nine foot ceiling. There's plenty of room up top. 
I can put uh, uh, top cabinet, upper cabinet lights up there if I wanted and uh, kind of shine, light up the ceiling really nice. Uh, it's just another option. Uh, and I've got plenty of room to work on the countertop. So um, the first, the, once I got the cabinet up, I wanted to make sure that it lined up with the base cabinet next to it. So when I did that, so, so I'm pushing on the cabinet against the wall so that it doesn't fall over with my shoulder. And I grab this with my left hand and I just kind of make sure that I am level right there. And so I had to shim it back and forth just a little bit. I would just tap on it with the, uh, with the rubber mallet to uh, get it where I needed. And that's how I got the position of it. So this thing is up on the wall. I've been pushing on it for several minutes now. My arms are starting to go numb. But uh, then I get up on the ladder and, uh, and that's where I start driving screws. I start at the top and really the first screw, I, I don't even care. I don't care if I'm even going in a stud. I just want to grab onto something so I don't have to push on it so hard. I also figured that there's no problem in having too many screws. In fact, I may put a couple more in just for good measure. I am 99% certain the stud is right there, uh, but I could be wrong. So why not just put a few more screws up at the top, just like I did here on this smaller cabinet and call it a day. Uh, once I got this cabinet up, I wanted to get this cabinet. You see, I got it lined up pretty close. It's not, not exact dead on, but uh, that's not a big deal. Uh, if I get a crown molding, uh, that'll look just fine. And really, if you're standing back here, are you really gonna care? Like, honestly, are you really gonna care? Uh, but still, if I get a crown molding, that won't be a problem at all, uh, and I might. Uh, so um, next, I just have to take off that piece of wood, and uh, you see here, I put some extra holes because I measured off of the fridge, not off of this countertop the first time around because I'm a dummy. Uh, so I've got a few holes to patch. Uh, and then of course the holes from the beam, not a big deal. Uh, I had fully intended to uh, do a second coat of a touch up in this kitchen once I have the backsplash and everything in. Uh, so that's, uh, so I'm just gonna wait until I have the backsplash and then I'll patch that up and uh, repaint it. Next up, we're gonna do the other side. Uh, so it's really exactly the same process. I've got uh, cabinets on either side of that and then a cabinet up across the top for the microwave. I do have to be a little bit careful of the microwave. So once I get these cabinets, the, the side cabinets up, uh, I have to make damn sure that the microwave uh, is gonna fit right between them. And I also need to double check the clearances between these two cabinets. So I got a lot more work to do over here because because of this microwave, I wanna line everything up really nice. So I've completed the next phase of my kitchen project and that is to hang the cabinets. Uh, you see I've also got the uh, cherry on top yesterday, which was to put in the little knobs. I also added the little bump stops so that when you fling the cabinet open, it doesn't go slamming into the wall. The cabinets do slam shut but again, there's bump stops on the inside so that uh, it's not wood smacking against wood. I brought in the stove and oven, uh, but it is not yet hooked up. Uh, I don't have the outlet behind it yet and also need to get the gas line, but it is Easter Sunday and the hardware store is closed. So uh, I have got all of the cabinets uh, lined in. This one is pretty good as long as you don't bump on it too hard. Uh, really, uh, I'm probably going to need to drive some long screws into the floor in the front just so that it doesn't jostle back and forth before we get a countertop. Uh, kind of the same deal over here. That one likes to move, especially considering it's so thin that if you bump on it too hard, it, it gets all out of whack. I put a piece of wood across the top to kind of brace them together, held down with finishing nails until I get a countertop uh, to secure it all down. The cabinets above the fridge look really good. Uh, you may notice that there is a slight um, uh, off-centering of these uh, knobs, but uh, I think that is because uh, this cabinet 
is a match to that cabinet and I have a feeling these doors uh, are switched. One of the doors is uh, needs to be swapped out to the cabinet over there. Uh, I'm just gonna cross that bridge when I get there. Uh, the next thing I need to worry about is actually this guy right here. Um, I got a bunch of shims back there, but I can trim them down. I'm not, I'm not at all worried about that. In fact, that's gonna be underneath the uh, kick plate anyway. So I need to trim this down to fit in there. Uh, and that is gonna be about 19 inches. And so uh, I am not sure why I brought this in the house, uh, probably just because it helps me visualize a little better. Uh, and I started taking kind of a critical look before uh, I turn on any saw blades and uh, realized that this edge here is routed. This is popped in with staples so I can replace those staples with finishing nails and some glue. And up front, uh, it looks like it's got these little staples here, which I can pretty easily cut to deconstruct this. And because the front has no routing in it, I think I can just make my, take my measurements, trim it down, and as long as I also trim back the, the, uh, the kick plate down here, uh, I think I have a winning recipe to shortening this cabinet because that way I can shorten the cabinet while keeping those holes intact. That way I can shorten this cabinet with keeping these uh, routes intact. Um, I still have to uh, discover what is going on underneath uh, because I'm gonna have to take uh, a few more things apart uh, in order to get it all deconstructed. And then I, of course, I'm gonna have to rebuild this cabinet. So this is going to be uh, quite an adventure. And we are cut and fit. This is uh, down to about 18 and a quarter inches, but it fits really nicely. Uh, special thanks to my electrician Lou for letting me use his uh, Milwaukee precision cutter. I'm gonna get one of those for myself because that was just an awesome tool. It allowed me to get all of the little tricky cuts and nuance cuts like you see in here where I cut a, just a little bit too much. Um, uh, I was able to use his tool for that because my tools just weren't getting close enough. Uh, so that was really cool. Um, and I've got the front. I've also got the front nailed on with finishing nails. Uh, it's just fine. It, it doesn't have those little staples, but it's going to be uh, at least as sturdy as it was before. So next up, I need to sand it down and refinish it so I can give it the beautiful finish that I gave to my other cabinets. The last step in my cabinet finishing journey is uh, the side pieces. I have cut and stained all of the side pieces for the cabinets. Uh, this uh, was a lesson in patience because I was having a bad day when I cut this. And I ended up cutting up an entire four by eight sheet into scraps because I was not patient because uh, I was just having a rough day and um, you know, every little setback just uh, made my mistakes worse. So after I made this little pile over here, uh, I had to go get a whole nother sheet. And once I got that other sheet, uh, I had a kind of a clean slate to work with and I was able to get them all knocked out. Uh, now you can see this cabinet obviously is not installed, but the other ones are. Why is that? Well, uh, I mentioned before that this cabinet came pre-finished, but uh, another thing that I actually didn't notice until I went to uh, stain the cabinets was that it has a different door. It's a completely different grain of wood. It's uh, just uh, everything about it is different. In fact, it is so different that I am just getting another base cabinet here. So I went to Home Depot's website the day I went to cut this and learned that uh, they do have more now coming in stock and they're going to be in right around the time that I need them. So this means that all I really have to do since I've already cut this, is just swap out the face. So once I get the new cabinet in, I'm gonna swap out the face, put it on here, uh, stain it, 
and uh, get it all looking pretty like the other ones. Uh, same with the door. And uh, just roll with that. Uh, the cabinet that is going to get this face, I can put in my house somewhere. I have a couple of other builds coming up uh, that I need, uh, that I could make use of an unmodified blind corner cabinet. And I'll just uh, keep it there. I'll just keep, I'll just, I'll just set it aside and use it later. Uh, there, there is uh, absolutely nothing wasted here, even though it seems like it, even though, um, you know, at first it felt like I was wasting money. Uh, so for the finish on the side itself, it's still a little rough. And that's because I've only done two rounds of, uh, yes, this is the second coat that I have drying now of the uh, polyurethane. So I have to hit this one more time and then I can uh, knock it down with a thousand grit and get it all nice and smooth like the other cabinets. But uh, let's take a look inside the kitchen with the lights on. I still have to get new bulbs for these schoolhouse lights. You can see that one doesn't have anything. Uh, but you do really get a feel for how nice these cabinets look with the warm light, especially in the afternoon when it starts getting dark. This just looks so good. I'm really happy with this. Uh, so once I get this kind of touched up and dialed in, it's gonna look really good. I have the fridge pulled out here because I believe my electrician still has to run a ground wire in that box. Uh, once, once that's done, I'll be able to put an outlet on and I'll have a working fridge. Uh, I still have to also put an outlet behind the oven. I didn't bother pulling it out yet because uh, I am not yet paying for gas anyway. Uh, so once I'm ready to do that, then I'll make that a little bit more of an urgent thing. Microwaves in there, nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. Oh yeah, I also put the uh, the uh, shelving in the cabinets. Uh, these only came with one shelf. Uh, it may be prudent to later on put more shelves in, but um, you know, if you're renting, it should be fine. Uh, this I have not put the shelf in. I am using the shelves as a temporary countertop. 